Welcome to this lecture about the art of modeling. This lecture actually is a follow-up to the uh, first lecture on the course uh, called An Introduction to Modeling and Simulation. In that introduction, there was a little bit of modeling, a little bit of simulation, and the way that they fit together. Um, and uh, as far as the modeling part of it, there was some material that was specific to creating models uh, that you were going to be studying in this lecture. There really isn't only one way of creating uh, a model. Um, what makes a model good? Is this model better than some other model? I mean, really, it's more of an art than a science. Uh, expertise goes a long way in this case. Um, as we've seen in the previous uh, lecture on modeling, uh, you, models are everywhere. Um, we, I'm not going to you know, repeat what we studied already, but if you haven't looked at it yet, it's a, it actually is a very, very interesting lecture, if I say so myself. Um, you have models in f fields, uh, in humanities, in business, in engineering, in the arts. Uh, and all of these models have things in common and things that are not in common. But no matter what model you're talking about, you're going to have abstraction, you're going to have structure, you're going to have information hiding. Um, they, there's always going to be simplification uh, and management of complexity. The world is a complex place. If we want to study something, we have to reduce the complexity, simplify, and highlight that aspect of the world that we're trying to study. That's basically what the art of modeling is all about. What do we need when we are um, in the modeling uh, effort? Well, we're going to look at a problem, analyze it. That's the way a lot of things start out. Modeling is no different. Um, the problem is going to be a, um, a complex problem, a real world problem. We want to abstract from it the essential features uh, that we want to study. What are the things that must be in there? What are, and, and certainly, whatever it is we want to study, that must be in there. Look at the assumptions. Number three, we're going to look at the assumptions. We want to test them. We want to modify them. Um, you may want assumptions because you can't create a simple model any other way. Uh, and then finally, once we have a simple model, then we can start enriching it and making it more and more complex and keep testing as we go along to make sure that it's still an accurate representation of reality. As we go about modeling, there's really no one cut and dried method. But some of the things you should consider and make, make sure that you do when you're creating a model, when you're building a model, um, without looking at other models at the same time. The first thing you do is you have a problem. You may want to factor it, reduce it into several simpler problems. You can create models for each of those, perhaps. Um, you definitely want to know what your objective is for this modeling effort. Uh, you 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 need to know what am I what am I studying this for? What's the variable or variables that I'm studying? What's my objective? You may want to seek analogies because why reinvent the wheel? There may be something already out there that models a similar system, and you can make use of it. Um, you reduce by looking at something complex and variable, and um, consider it not to be a variable. Let's try um, one specific constant. Try running the problem as a model and see what happens. And then, you know, you can always um, make it more variable later on after you've you know, got a handle on it. Uh, yeah, you want some symbols. It's, you know, you want to look at things that are specific and look at the problem and say, okay, wait, I need to uh, have some symbolic representation of uh, the complexity of this uh, system. Um, don't miss out on the obvious. Uh, that's a, a very common mistake, is we think everybody knows something, and then all of a sudden we come back 
a few months later and say, why didn't we do this? And then, um, and finally, if a tractable model is, in is obtained, like, be like the previous slide, uh, then you go ahead and you say, okay, I can work with this, the model's good. Let me see if I can make it more complex because I just simplified it an awful lot. And you can see the first and last of the guidelines here uh, it tells you, advises you to simplify your, your original problem. And so that kind of begs the question, how do I simplify? Well, we already had some of this here, but it's almost like uh, steps in the process and looking under the, the to simplify uh, box. We want to take variables, turn them into constants. It's a very good way of building a model, testing the model, and then you can later on start to say, okay, fine, now I'm going to turn the constants into variables and see if it still works. And then you would do a sensitivity analysis. Um, the next step would be uh, further reducing the, the variables. Maybe take some away, combine some, just to simplify. You can always put it back later once you have a working model. Assume something. Uh, assume some kind of relationship among the variables. Why do I say assume linearity? Because it's very well studied and we could do a lot with it. And, um, we can you know, do a apply regression to the output values of the of the model if it's a, if it's a database if it's numeric quantitative. Um, so you you and you don't have to assume linearity, but it's just one example. You can assume uh, that the relationships in the model are log linear. Um, make assumptions, and that'll simplify things tremendously. That's what people do with models make restrictions. And then finally, restrict the boundaries of the system, the scope of the system, um, so that you have a smaller universe to work with because you can always spread it out and make it more universal later on. And then of course you take these suggestions for simplifying your model and once you have a simple tractable model, and then just go in the opposite direction. Constants to variables, um, increase the bounds of the system, and so on. We have looked at the process of modeling uh, without being specific about the area, even though much of what we talked about here is definitely applicable to creating simulation models. Um, we iteratively uh, simplify, test, enrich and then still test we basically want to we're doing testing to make sure that this is a valid model uh, that it's a good representation of the real world when we finally have the final model that we're going to be working with that's the best model we can come up with it's going to be workable because it's a it's definitely simpler than the real world and so it, it helps us to study the the uh, entities that we're interested in studying or the relationships that we're interested in studying. And yet it is also about as, as complex as we can make it uh, and still uh, make sure that the, the model uh, is valid to work with. Thank you very much for attending this lecture.